we're going to get in our time machine and we're going to move to our next time period which is the year 1400 um, and we are in a church somewhere in Europe um, and as we get out of our time machine we find ourselves in a grand medieval stone church um, it's brightly painted, there are a lot of people there, there are murals along the walls and statues of the saints. The congregation is large because um, it seems like basically everyone from the local town is here. Um, and they stand in the nave for the service, there are no pews at this point of course. Um, and as we watch it seems initially like the service hasn't yet begun because people are just milling around. Uh, some people are catching up with their neighbours, others seem to be transacting some kind of business, uh, since of course everyone from the local town is there, um, and others seem to be engaging in their own personal devotional activities. Um, they appear to be uh, praying in front of the statues of the saints, or um, saying the rosary. But as we move through the church up towards the east end, we notice that actually the service is in progress. The uh, inside of the church is slightly different to church as we would now experience it, in that the altar is right up against the east end, uh, right up against the wall of the church, uh, so that no, you can't get behind the altar. Um, and between the nave where the people are and the altar where the priest is conducting the service, there is a screen. Um, and it's, it's a screen that you can see through. There are gaps in it, uh, but it separates the people from what is going on. And as we look through the screen, we see that the priest is conducting the service. Um, but as we listen, we can hear that he is speaking in a language uh, that is not the language of the people. He is speaking in Latin. Um, and uh, when it comes to the actual Eucharist, the uh, part of the service with the bread and the wine, the priest stands between the people and the altar, facing away from the people, uh, looking east. Um, and the high point in the service is the point where the priest says the Latin words, hoc est corpus meum. This is my body. Um, and he elevates the uh, host, the bread at that point. Um, and at that point, a bell is rung and everyone turns to adore the host, the bread, which is believed to have become at that moment the literal body of Christ. When it comes to receiving communion, the people come forward to receive and uh, children don't receive, only those who have been confirmed uh, so those who are 13 or over receive, um, and they only receive the bread, they don't receive the wine, only the priest drinks the wine, and they receive the bread on the tongue, uh, not in their hands. So again, I want you to pause the video for a moment at this point, if uh, you're able, and just write down what strikes you as interesting from um, that experience. Um, and then think for a moment as well, what is communion about to these people? How might they explain communion if you were to ask them what is going on here? So how did they think about communion in the medieval church? I don't know what you came up with, uh, but I wrote down three words, real presence sacrifice and vicarious and um, because the way the Eucharist was thought about in the medieval church and actually this is still the official teaching of the Roman Catholic Church today is the mass or the Eucharist is an unbloody sacrifice um, in the mass Christ is being re-sacrificed on the altar and those who eat the bread and the wine are literally eating and drinking the body and blood of Jesus um, though the bread and the wine continues to look and taste like bread and wine, a miracle has taken place when the priest says those Latin words, uh, this is my body, uh, the miracle of transubstantiation, the bread and the wine have become the body and blood of Christ. Um, 
And I, 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 one of the words I said is uh, it's vicarious. That is, uh, the priest does something on behalf of the people. The priest is making a sacrifice on behalf of the people. That's why the priest stands between the people and the altar. Um, and so the, in the traditional Roman Catholic service of ordination, the words uh, that were said about the priest was receive the power to make sacrifices for the living and the dead. Uh, they are making a sacrifice on behalf of other people. Uh, this is called transubstantiation, um, which you know, is to do with the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Um, and you know, this has, of course, um, sometimes led to a kind of nominal thinking um, and a nominal attitude towards church. Um, you know, the priest is doing this on my behalf. So as long as I go to confession and go to mass a couple of times a year, um, I'm OK because someone else is doing this God stuff for me.